Thank you, thank you, thank you all very much. You keep coming. I love you guys, really I do. And it's not just because you guys paid, here, paid to be here today either. It's because you guys are the innovators of the banking industry. You guys make this job fun for me. You guys are the rebels, the, the risk takers. You're the ones who are always asking, what if and why not? You wouldn't be here today if you thought the status quo was good enough. You're always looking for new ideas, new ways to do it better, work smarter, new sources of inspiration. That's why you're here, and that's what I love about you. But the truth is, it isn't easy being an innovator, is it? I mean, it's, it's hard being the champion of new ideas. Getting others on board with a, a new idea can be a difficult, painful, and arduous journey. I'd like to give you a quick example of what I'm talking about here. Uh, show of hands, how many of you have seen the film The Hudsucker Proxy with Tim Robbins? Any of you? Few? Okay, a few of you. Uh, so The Hudsucker Proxy, for those of you who don't know, is a film starring Tim Robbins. And he works as a lowly mail clerk at a giant toy, co to toy company called Hudsucker Industries. But Tim's character, Norville Barnes, isn't just a mail clerk, He's a man with a dream, a man with a vision. He believes he has an idea so big, it can change the world. And in the first half of the movie, Tim's character, Norville, runs around trying to explain his idea to anyone who will listen. And whenever he's pitching his innovation, he reaches into his pocket, takes out this sad, crumpled little piece of paper, unfolds it, and proudly presents it to the listener. And he says, you know, for kids. For kids. Now, there's nothing on this piece of paper but an illustration of a basic circle, and all people can do is just stare at it and go, for kids? Uh, they have no clue what he's talking about. It's just a circle, so, so what? Now, this illustrates one of the major challenges you guys are going to face as innovators. You can have the most brilliant idea ever, but it is never going to get off the ground if you can't explain it, if you can't impart it to others in a way that they can understand. So no matter how obvious your idea may seem to you, no matter how simple it is, as an innovator, you must master the art of presentation. In other words, it's not enough just to have good ideas. You have to be able to sell them, too. You have to get others to see your vision before they're going to be able to share your passion. And in the Hudsucker Proxy, that's where poor old Norville Barnes gets stuck. You know, for kids. So one day, through a stroke of good fortune, poor old Norville catches a break, and he finally gets the opportunity to present his idea to the Hudsucker Industries board. And this time, he knows he can't blow it. You know, he's got to take a radically different approach with his pitch. Can't take any chances. So in the clip I'm about to show you, Tim Robbins is playing the role of Norville Barnes, our frustrated mail clerk with a big idea. He's in front of the board, pitching his innovation, which is a wild new children's toy which could save the entire company. Shh. Kids. It has economy, simplicity, low production costs, potential for mass appeal, and all that spells out great profitability. I had the boys down at R&D throw together this little prototype so that our discussion here could have some focus, and to give you gentlemen of the board a first-hand look at just how exciting this gizmo is. It's fun, it's healthy, it's good exercise, the kids will just love it, and we put a little sand inside to make the experience more pleasant. But the great part is we don't have to charge an arm and a leg. Okay. You guys are innovators, you know this feeling, right? Look at his face. It's exciting, it's fun. Look at how happy he is, he's thrilled. He finally gets to show the world what he's been talking about all these years, the hula hoop. Ah, yes, for kids, I get it now. So Norville could have shown his little schematic diagram of a circle to anyone and everyone for the rest of his life, but the reality is most people struggle with new and abstract concepts. They have a hard time imagining the world any differently than it already is today. 
So what you need to do as an innovator is you need to paint them a vivid picture. Or in Norville's case here, nothing short of a working demo was going to do it. People simply couldn't grasp what he was talking about, at least not the way he was presenting it. Now, in the clip, it seems you'd think that Norville is on the cusp of triumph. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? He just presented his idea, and he nailed it. He demoed the product, uh, sold the benefits, outlined a marketing plan, walked through some financials, and he did that all in about 30 seconds. That's one heck of an elevator pitch, I'd say. So now at this point in the movie, you'd think that victory was just around the corner for Norville. Except for this, he runs into a room full of skeptics. What if you tie before it's done? Does it have rules? Can more than one play? What makes you think it's a game? Is it a game? Will it break? It better break eventually. Is there an object? What if you tie before it's done? Does it come with batteries? Could we charge extra for them? Is it safe for toddlers? How do you know when you're finished? How do you make it stop? Is that a boy's model? And can a parent assemble it? What if you tie before it's done? Is there a larger model for the obese? What the hell is it? Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, Okay, again, ah, right? Sound familiar? I mean, you guys are innovators, banks and credit unions. So again, you probably know this feeling, right? There you are, you're, you're all pumped up about your big idea, and you just hit a home, home run. You, you took the pitch and you knocked it clean out of the park. But then you run into the objectors. Now, for innovators like you, you're gonna have to accept, you're gonna have to realize that there are always going to be people who resist new ideas the naysayers, the party poopers, the curmudgeons. These are people that recoil at the prospect of anything new. They will actually invent excuses simply to avoid anything with the faintest waft of freshness or originality. And poor Norville here is in a room stuffed with objectors. So in the clip, you can kind of feel it. The tide has turned and things are starting to look a little ugly. From Norville. He wasn't prepared for this. Fortunately, the CEO of Hudsucker Industries, played by Paul Newman, sweeps in to save the board from themselves. It's uh, brilliant. Genius. So we're going to go ahead and clip, uh, cut the clip short there. But I'll tell you, in the rest of the scene, Paul Newman proceeds to tell the board that Norville has the kind of fresh thinking that Hudsucker Industries needs. And Norville's hula hoop is going to be what saves the company. Thank goodness, right? A CEO with both vision and the courage to execute on that vision. I mean, if it weren't for him, the world might not have never been introduced to the hula hoop. And Hudsucker Industries, by the way, would have gone straight down the toilet. Now, of course, this is a fictional story. Someone else actually invented the hula hoop. But the lessons we can learn from the film are very real. The Hudsucker Proxy is a parable about innovation. You see, as an innovator, you've got to be adept at presenting and selling your ideas. You have to have tenacity. You can't give up. You're going to have to anticipate people's objections. How are you going to overcome them? And as Paul Newman's character just helped illustrate, you need a culture that embraces innovation. And that starts with leadership right at the very top. But you also have to get a little introspective and look in the mirror. You have to ask yourself, how do I respond when confronted with new ideas? What would you have done if someone like Norville Barnes showed you uh, his little il illustration and crumpled up piece of paper with a circle on it? Would you have dismissed the idea? Thought it was dumb? Yes, you are an innovator. Yes, you came here to be inspired. Yes, you are here to discover new ideas. But might you also, at times, be an objector? Fair question. The skeptic who sometimes struggles to see the potential of new ideas? So the big question is, how can you be more like Norville Barnes, always fired up with enthusiasm and always looking for those fresh new ideas, and less like the Hudsucker Industries Board, those who are 
looking for the faults and flaws that will always be lurking in the shadows of anything creative. What can you do to be more successful as an innovator? How can you avoid those psychological roadblocks that tend to hold us back and quash our creativity? I mean, for that matter, what separates someone who is commonly admired as creative from anyone else? It's pretty simple, really. Creative people have simply learned to ignore the rules. To an innovator, there are no obstacles that can't be overcome. Truly creative people don't apply any boundaries or limitations, which honestly is what most of us do. We're taught from a very young age to paint within the lines. We've acclimated ourselves to a very narrow range of possibilities and what's considered acceptable. Doctor, lawyer, fireman, for instance. But creative people, innovators, see nothing but limitless potential, a world of opportunity. Do you know why we regard Einstein as a genius? It's not because he was great at math or science or physics, which he was, of course. It's because he was a creative problem solver. Here's a hypothetical that I think will help illustrate the point. It's called the Purdue Creativity Test. And in the Purdue Creati Creativity Test, you take a paperclip and you ask someone to come up with as many creative ideas and innovative uses as they possibly can for a paperclip. How many ideas do they come up with? The average is somewhere around a dozen, maybe 20, sometimes more. Do you want to know how many uses there are for a paperclip? Just ask MacGyver. MacGyver had a new use for a paperclip in just about every single episode of his show. But then you ask someone like Einstein what a paperclip might be used for, and he will come up with thousands of ideas, literally thousands. He'll strip away the boundaries, rules, and limitations that interfere with an average person's creativity. And he'll ask questions like, well, what if the paperclip was the size of a galaxy? Why not? Or, what if the paperclip is made of gas? I mean, Einstein was a physicist, so again, why not? Or what if it was made of glass or granite or water? Why not? That's why Einstein was a genius. Now, here's the neat thing. The truth is, we were all born creative, just like Einstein. It's true. I mean, why are kids always considered more creative than adults? Why is that? It's because kids haven't had all these arbitrary restrictions ingrained into their psyches the way the rest of us have. They haven't learned the rules. Remember, the paperclip game, the Purdue creativity test, teaches us that there are no rules when it comes to being creative. That's why kids like playing with things like boxes and mud and pots and rubber bands, because there's no rules. They are free to let their imaginations run wild. So the trick isn't becoming creative. It's actually learning how to stay creative. And just like with any muscle, you have to exercise your creativity and stretch your imagination if you're going to keep it in shape. The more you work at it, the stronger you're going to get. So let me give you guys one more, one final example of what I'm talking about here. We're going to do a little ex exercise. It's called the 30 circles test. And in front of you, there should be a piece of paper with 30 circles on it. Uh, six rows of five, five rows of six. Doesn't matter which way you're holding it, doesn't matter. What I want you to do is I want you to take that piece of paper and in the next 90 seconds, I want you to adapt as many of those circles as you can into objects of some form. Use each circle as the basis to create something, anything, it doesn't matter. Sun, smiley face, soccer ball, doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be pretty, all you're going for is quantity. I want you to come up with as many ideas as you can. So is everybody ready? Off you go. Okay, so who got more than five circles figured out? Hands up if you got more than five circles. Okay, great, looks like most of you. Keep your hands up if you got 10, 10 or more. 10 or more? That's good, good. 15, 
20? Did anyone get all 30 in 90 seconds? I see a hand. Great. Now, I got a trick question for you. Did anyone leave their circle alone and just call it a hula hoop? Right? So all that was important here was quantity. It really wasn't important if they were all different. I mean, really what you could have done is done a smiley face, a sad face. You could have done 30 different emojis. Uh, and there is no right or wrong here. It's kind of like a Rorschach test. I just wanted you to fill in as many circles as possible. Because this helps illustrate a couple of points about being an innovator. First, I think it shows you what I was talking about. How creativity is a muscle. The more you work at it, the stronger it gets. I believe that if you sat down to repeat the 30 circles exercise, which you could do again, it's kind of fun. Uh, or take the Purdue creativity test with the paperclip, or some other similar creativity test, I would bet you'd get better at it, and better, and better, and better. You'd start to learn how to shed all those silly rules and restrictions that tend to hold us back while we're trying to be creative. But I also think it helps illustrate one of the things we tend to do as adults. Kids don't have this problem, but as adults, we actually stop ourselves from being creative. We self-censor as we're having ideas. We hear those little objectors sitting on our shoulders whispering into our ears with doubts like, no, that isn't, that's, that's too obvious, it's too silly. It isn't creative enough. Don't put that down. You know what I say? I say fooey to that. I say you can teach yourself to be more creative. I think you can learn to be more receptive to new ideas. You can learn to see opportunity everywhere and in everything. I mean, think about how many things Norville's simple undecorated circle could be. A hula hoop, a marble, an air bubble, cross-section of a tube looking down on a glass. You could have 30 things on the piece of paper without even touching them. Inspiration can be found everywhere. You can find inspiration all around you, even in things that might look or sound familiar, things that you think you've heard or seen a thousand times before, even an ordinary looking circle. So as you attend sessions and listen to speakers here at the Financial Brand Forum, as you network with your peers and engage in conversations with exhibitors, Please keep your eyes and your mind open, and you just may see circles of innovation and inspiration everywhere.